has now got very fast, as we saw during the England innings. On the first and second day, that wouldn't have gone away. Big out, Swinger. Wallace will go for it. Uncompromising. Just a push. And just emphasizing the speed on this outfield. Now this could well be a consideration. It's a lot of runs, no question about that. And no one expects a team set that number of runs to score them. But this outfield has really quickened up. It's high in the air. Squirted away over Gully. Brings four more for Wallace. through the offside as well as that at any time in the first innings. I think there's also a lesson to be learned here from what we saw in the first innings. I think if I were Mike Atherton, I'd be inclined to get a spinner on very quickly to both these players. Oh, that's his best stroke. Lovely stroke. Good free swing of the bat, and we saw the full blade there. goes it's a characteristic stroke Craig Cozier was telling me yesterday it's one that he's made all his own tends to go over uh, the mid on area he's a very natural striker of the ball I've seen many things about uh, Fino Wallace's batting style but uh, I don't think you could call him uh, a purist but that's what it says on his bat Again, and uh, that is a fearful uh, risk. He doesn't know how the ball's going to bounce out of the rough. But well, you have to say that it's really quite a strange shot in the circumstances of the match. Well, if you practice it long enough, you'll get it right eventually. It's a very good shot. away over mid-wicket just as uh, poor Fraser and Tufnell were beginning to subdue Lambert and Wallace the 50 comes up straight back over Fraser's head it beats Headley at mid-off and it's four more To hurry here. It's going to be close and it'll be referred to the third umpire. The direct hits invariably cause batsman problem. I think the problem here, Paul, is that Wallace didn't ground his bat. He was just running and he dipped the bat over the line. I think that is going to be the problem. Oh, he's out. Well. I'm sorry, I just can't believe that just inexplicable how the uh, third umpire has got that wrong big cry of catch it let's put it down Dean Headley has put down Philo Wallace at deep backward square well, everything is going Philo Wallace's way at the moment back pad and slip in position. Is the first ball of the fifth day's play. Oh! Great excitement from Tuffman and Russell. 
Clayton Lambert as per usual going onto the back foot to Phil Tufnell and playing inside the line of the ball here just allowing the ball to go through outside the off stump oh. Tufnell started off very well he's uh, got the first ball to bounce a lot and this has hit the rough patches and kept a bit low pretty well played by Lambert Behind the air, Headley's going for it, and he's taken it. It's a very good catch. He'd have seen the other fielder coming into his peripheral vision, that's the same, but Headley kept his nerve and clung onto the catch. Atherton's tactics have worked. He's got an early breakthrough. Clayton Lambert has gone, and the West Indies is now 72 for one. Clayton Lambert looking to pull that from pretty wide of off stump and Headley had a lot of ground to, to make. Well, he certainly has made up for the one that he dropped yesterday. This one he dropped yesterday should have been taken. Reasonably simple, this one a lot harder and he has held on. The Westerners have lost their first wicket on 72. The batsman uh, crossed with the ball in the air. So Brian Lara will be at the non-striker's end. West Indies captain comes out to join uh, Philo Wallace. There's no third man. Four more to uh, Philo Wallace. Eight boundaries for him. He's on to 42. That wicket certainly brought the uh, crowd alive here. Desperately trying to get that left foot outside the line of off stump. Just about getting there. I'm not too sure if he's very wide of off stump there. Eventually, when the leg straightens, it is outside off stump. But at the point of striking, well, batsmen usually get the benefit of the doubt, and he got it there. Oh. It might carry the third slip. Excellent over from Angus Fraser. Wicket taking his tally to 26 in the series. One for 26 from his five overs. And could so easily have been another wicket here. First delivery went into Philo Wallace. This one hitting the pitch and going away, but just falling short of Nasser Hussein in the third slip. Not enough pace to carry it into the slip on the pull. That's a good bowling. He's getting a bit of movement off the sea, Mangos Fraser. And I thought he would have put quite a few men around the bat and encouraged the batsmen to try and move them by playing a few aggressive shots. And of course, on this pitch, with a bit of rough outside the left hand as off, well, that could be dangerous. One would think that there are only two possible results in this test match an England victory or a draw Lara's on his way it's costing him 45 that's uh, too many really Expect a good test match spinner to get his wickets at around 30 or 32 apiece. Dean Headley in pursuit. down at third man don't think he was really convinced after playing that shot that it was the right one though ball was a bit wide of his body there it is that grimace on the face and then 
the leave alone. 44 for Philo Wallace, 2 to Brian Lara. 80 for 1 from 25 overs. Oh. Problems again for the left hand out of the rough. That one really exploding. That spot there is a problem area. Pretty difficult for Brian Lara to get to that spot without leaving his crease to cover the spin. And then, of course, there's just another little spot here, a bit further out from the batsman. Too short. Dispatched with some disdain by uh, the West Indies captain. David Lloyd, alongside Chairman of Selectors David Graveney. David Lloyd was fairly philosophical earlier on thinking it was uh, unlikely England could force a result and it's going to be even more unlikely because uh, there's some drizzle falling here at uh, Kensington Oval you certainly don't want to see a ball behaving awkwardly even on the normal surface popping off the glove or off the bat onto the pad and then no one there to take the catch. Certainly don't need too many defensive fielders in a situation like this. Doesn't matter how many runs the West Indies get, it's almost impossible for them to win. It's the wicket of Lara that England are after. Yeah, someone get it, someone get it. Nicely angled away. Sends Wallace back and the tough comes over. 87 for one, the West Indies. Oh. Got away with it, kept just a little lower than uh, Lara thought, I think. Yeah, fifth day, obviously, of this game, and just a little variation in bounce. We've praised this pitch, and that just kept a little low. Lara still looking to score. It will be a great test for Brian Lara. He's really got to bat as long as he possibly can. Scoring runs is not important to Lara in the West Indies. Survival is. Yeah. Made sure that uh, he retains the strike as well, Lara, who moves on to nine. Philo Wallace has uh, 45. And Mike Allerton and uh, his men would dearly love a prolonged go at Philo Wallace. They're being denied that by Lara's patience and his artistry and skill at pinching singles when they matter most. England are on the attack. Four men round the bat for Lara. Just uh, a little opening of the face has done the trick there for the single. Ow! Cries of catch it from short leg and slip. I don't think there was any under edge on that. Very, very difficult if, uh, even if there was. I think it might have just clipped the pad on the way through. Interested uh, in Tuffnell's tactic of coming over the wicket. Oh, that's a magical stop from Dean Headley. Anybody in the Premier League back uh, in UK would have been delighted with that handiwork on the touchline. Sweetly timed from Philo Wallace as well, racing away down to Backwood Square. And Dean Headley, and the slide tackle. And a good throw. It's the old uh, scoop it up, knock it across, and hope someone's at the far post for the bullet header into the top corner, isn't it? The volley from the edge of the box. Yeah. The run out would have been good, wouldn't it? Oh! Wow. Now, Nasser Hussein was done by uh, a real grubber a couple of tests back. Brian Lara has very nearly been done by one as well. 
Well, you say it might be unlikely for England to win this, Mark. A few more of these deliveries and straighter ones than this because that has just literally run along the floor. It's not a question of bouncing. It hasn't. It's dribbled. There you go. All the way along the floor. Doesn't look good, does it? We've got the ground staff getting ready. They've got the yellow oilies on. Forecast from the Met Office was that the afternoon would be clearer than not uh, blue skies by any means. And there may be occasional showers. Good hit. What a way to go to 50 when you've been recalled to the test side. You do it with a maximum. First ball round the wicket for a while from uh, Philip Tuttle, dispatched onto the top of the Pickwick Pavilion by Philo Wallace. When you've had uh, a rough time of it in test cricket, on one outing, you're left out and then recalled, you're under pressure. And here in front of his own people in Barbados, he's pushed that pressure aside, played his own natural game, hasn't compromised himself at all, gone out and enjoyed it, and it's reflected in his scores. More runs for him here. There's two of them. 100 up for the West Indies. There was uh, so much disappointment around this big ground when he was uh, judged LBW in the first inning. So much so that one or two people uh, over a quiet drink in the evening were telling me that uh, had there been a full house here of West Indian supporters rather than the 50% English supporters, there might have been a danger of play being stopped so angry would that the locals have been en masse. And who could blame them when your favourite son is uh, going like a train and suddenly and surprisingly given out LBW? Measure there the straightness of his hitting. 21 of those runs in the V between mid-off and mid-on. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, chart, that, actually. You would expect an opening batsman against the new ball to have a much higher percentage of runs behind square than straight down the ground. He's only just scored more runs behind square than down the ground. Oh. Very clever stuff from Fraser. And he, what he did was he got Lara off balance. Now that was my point about Lara and Lara's need to score. Didn't need to play at that, but Fraser has been nagging away at him. And that line tighter than that on off stump. And uh, it is clever bowling because it's a little bit fuller that delivery. Not a half volley, but just a bit fuller, bit wide, and it drew Lara out of the crease. Made him play at it. Well, England have got to get lively in that area at to cover and mid-off. It's twice now, Lara has just dropped the ball out on the offside, pretty much straight to fielders. He's taken the pace off the ball with the quite soft hands, but England know that he's looking to just get away from Fraser, really keep the strike moving all the time, and those fielders have got to be in tight. to end the over for the West Indies. Clean strike, straight over mid-off. You can't fault that stroke. Just maybe worth uh, Fraser's while bowling with a deep long off. Since he hit uh, Tottenham for that towering six over long on. Tottenham's put a man out. He's out at deep long off, though.
Yeah, lest anybody wonder why that would be, why you wouldn't plug the area where he's hitting the ball, the reason is that Tuffnell will think that Wallace looking to hit him on the onside is uh, a plus point for the bowler because the ball is turning away to the offside and it may just make for a full stroke. You want to encourage him to hit uh, against the spin of the ball. Andrew Caddick into the attack instead of Angus Fraser. Jack Russell into the action down the leg side. Good stop from Jack Russell. It's a pad and Russell has to go a fair way to his left. It's a better dive from him. He seems to struggle to get down the leg side at times. I think it's because of this very open stance he adopts facing extra cover. Sort of blocks himself out going down the leg side. Very close, yeah, had to be this time. Wallace had a look because he thinks he's forward, but Paddock has hit him very low on the shin. Just nipped it back a fraction off the seam. And I don't think Wallace will have uh, too much of a grievance with that one when he looks at it on the replay. That's good bowling from Caddick. Bit of extra pace the previous delivery, and this one has nipped back, hit him plumb in front. On the crease, going nowhere other than middle stump. And Eddie Nichols says that's out. Philo Wallace has gone for 61, West Indies 108 for two. Shivnarayan Chandapal, the new batsman for the West Indies. 23 years old, but a player of enormous maturity. You'd think cut out for a rear guard situation such as the 